Hey guys, what's up? I'm Ejin Des. Today's video is going to be all in English、uh, because it is a video response to another YouTuber out there, Matt vs. Japan.、Uh, I assume his name is Matt, so I'm going to go with that throughout this video. Anyways,、um, I was watching one of his videos. I saw it come up on my YouTube homepage. It was a video about learning kanji and how. Uh, he was making an argument as to why remembering the kanji, the book by George Hasek, is like the best top way, best way to learn Japanese kanji. And I was watching the video, it's a pretty long video, keep in mind.、Um, I'll put a link in, in, of it into the description below so you can watch it too. Anyways, I'm going through this video and <laughs> my, my, one of my videos, footage, a clip from my videos, actually came up in his video. And I'm like, Whoa! <laughs> That's my video! And I actually laughed. I was like, whoa, this is, this is pretty cool. It's my video. I had no idea this guy was going to use my video. I had no idea that it was being used like this. And then、uh, I listened more to his、um, argument in his video and I realized wait a minute, he's using my video in a way that kind of bashes a product or a method of learning kanji and learning Japanese that I support. And I was like,、mm, this isn't such a positive thing. What is this? Now, some of you might be thinking, oh boy, YouTube drama. Ame Jean's gonna lay it on him. And no, that's not what I'm gonna do. I hate drama. I don't wanna start any drama. I don't wanna get involved in like a YouTube war or anything like that.、Um, I actually thought his video was very good, very well put together, wonderful. I love the calligraphy things that he you know, put in throughout the shots. That was good. But he didn't ask me to use my video or do any of that. And the content of his video was something that his video had a few. He, he was talking about Wani Kani specifically in his video, along with remembering the kanji and then some other third party kanji learning program, which I don't even use.、Um, but in the video, he was kind of bashing Wani Kani and saying how inferior it was to remembering the kanji. When he was talking about Wani Kani, however, there were a lot of contradictions and a lot of falsities in there that I kind of want to discuss and clear up in this video. There's really a lot I could say about.、Um, Matt's video, he. I really don't know where to start actually. I guess I'll start with saying that he goes into talking a lot about in context and out of context learning of kanji. And he makes the claim that remembering the kanji is an in context、uh, way or method approach, if you will, to learning kanji characters. He also claims that Wani Kani is an out of context method. I'm not exactly sure how he reaches that conclusion.、Uh, the only thing I could think of is that he hasn't really used Wani Kani or done enough research because it really just fits all his definitions of an in context system. On the other hand, remembering the kanji fits the definition of an in context system less than Wani Kani, in my opinion. And I'm gonna go and over that and explain why in a second. So, his definition of an out of context approach to learning kanji is one in which you just look at the character and you kind of like memorize how to write the character, and then you memorize a list of readings and a list of definitions that you know, it could possibly mean or it possibly relates to. And I completely agree, this is definitely an out of context way. You have no context, you're just given straight facts, straight information about the kanji. An in context version, he says, you know, works well with the brain, naturally how you think about things,、uh, works naturally well with how kanji actually works. When you're learning in context, you learn characters by a case by case basis. And really, he didn't explicitly say this, but when you learn something in context, you have context. This means if you're learning a kanji character, you're learning what words it's used in. And if you're learning words, you learn sentences or you see sentences and you have sentences that use that word and actually show how that word is being used. That's literally in context learning. For some reason,、uh, Matt claims that Wani Kani doesn't do any of this. He claims that by saying, you know, it's an out of context learning system. Well, actually, <laughs>、um, it does do all of that and more, actually. For every entry, 
Wani Kani has context sentences. It's literally called context sentences. And when it's teaching you individual kanji characters, it provides for you words that use the kanji. That's context right there. So I'm really confused as to why he's calling Wani Kani an out of context system. It's just, it doesn't make sense. And then when you look at remembering the kanji, I would even argue that remembering the kanji is less in context than Wani Kani. I have actually the first two remembering the kanji books right here, the first one and the second one. And um, he referenced the first one almost exclusively. I didn't see any reference to the second book. The first book only teaches you the characters and assigns one single English meaning to each and every character, which is great, that's perfect. But remembering the kanji doesn't give you any context sentences or doesn't put them into any words to show you the context. Now it does do that a little bit in the second book when it actually teaches you the pronunciations, but by that time you're not learning kanji characters, you're not learning their meanings in context with the first book. You have to reach the second book when you're actually learning the second part uh, of kanji, which is the readings. And at that point it's only providing you one, one or two maybe words per character. Wani Kani goes above and beyond by giving you a whole slew of vocabulary, as well as context sentences, often more than one. This claim that Wani Kani is out of context is just false. And to even state that, <laughs> remember the kanji is more an in-context approach, more, than, more so than Wani Kani is kind of, well, <laughs> unfounded. He also talks a lot about memory interference. This is the concept of learning similar characters or words with similar meanings in a close period of time. And then and when you do that, you just mix up the meanings in your brain and it just gets all confusing. Memory interference. And his claim is that remembering the kanji is superior in that it does not have any memory interference because characters are each given one single keyword, English keyword, uh, that you can match with one kanji character and it never overlaps. So this is kind of true, actually, with remembering the kanji. Uh, in reality, sometimes some characters are given additional meanings, depending on whether or not they are a single standalone character or whether or not they are a component of another character. For example, this character means moon. But according to Heisig's remembering the kanji, when it's used as a component to another character, it can also mean flesh. So this idea that every single character in the Remembering the Kanji book has one single English keyword or meaning is also false. He then makes the argument that Wani Kani is inferior in this regard because it provides a list of other keywords or meanings um, for every character or every word. While Wani Kani does provide other terms or synonyms as it's called in Wani Kani, this isn't an issue because Wani Kani does not require you to learn that list or to learn all those words. Wani Kani is great in that it gives you a lot of options. So if you want to learn that this character means moon, you can just learn moon for that character. <laughs> Wani Kani never, ever, ever tells you to memorize all of these synonyms, all of these definitions for this one word or for this one character. If you've done memorization training or if you've learned kanji or other character systems uh, before, you know very well that this system of learning a list for one character or learning a bunch of multiple meanings for one character word is not efficient and it's just common sense not to learn them like that. When I use Wani Kani, I don't memorize all the terms that it gives or all the synonyms that it gives. I memorize one synonym that I know I can associate with this character and that I know I can remember later on. So in that way, Matt and I are doing the same exact things just with two different systems. Another great feature of Wani Kani is that it allows you to put in your own user-defined synonyms. If you don't like anything Wani Kani gives or if if you've already associated a kanji character component or word with another meaning, one that Wani Kani doesn't have in its database, then you can add it if you want and use it from then on. That is much more beneficial to me than pre-made keywords that you really can't change in this print book. <laughs> I'm gonna put on the screen an example, a screenshot that I took of me learning this word. 
you can see that it has places to put in your own sentences as well as uh, how to remember the pronunciations if you so desire. It also shows you the pronunciation of the word. You can click that. This is one of the greatest benefits of Wanikani, especially for people who want to focus on the pitch accent of a word. Wanikani just has so many features that these books, these Heisig books, don't have. And that's one of the reasons why I made the switch from remembering the kanji to Wanikani. One other false claim that was made in the video was that Wanikani was an out of context approach, which I already disproved, and that it tries to remedy the pitfalls of an out of context approach by providing a bunch of vocabulary that you can use after you've learned kanji characters. We already established that Wanikani is not an out of context approach, so it's not remedying anything. <laughs> in fact, this is a feature of Wanikani. And when you compare them, while Wanikani and remembering the kanji are very, very similar, their ultimate purpose and their ultimate goals are different. Remembering the kanji, book one at least, is to just get you to build a mental dictionary of the characters with, without pronunciations. That's just book one. You have to actually buy book two if you want to get pronunciations and some, some example words for all those characters. In Wanikani, the goal is essentially different. Wanikani stresses not only learning kanji characters and their components and how they're made up, stuff like that, but it throws in vocabulary in there. I have learned so many words and so many kanji characters thanks to Wanikani, and my, my mental lexicon has just grown so much. And really, I'm very, very thankful to the people at Tofugu and the people who made Wanikani. It really is an inspiration. Anyways, he also claims that remembering the kanji uh, solves all the problems of learning kanji by helping you to be able to write the kanji from memory. And I think he's getting this idea that remembering the kanji allows you to write the kanji from memory because it breaks down the kanji characters into individual pieces and those individual pieces of stories and you can just put them all together to remember the kanji and write them out like that. Well, um, Wani Kani does the same exact thing. There's really no difference between the two in this regard. Literally every character can be broken down into pieces that Wani Kani makes. And Wani Kani provides pre-made monomics, pre-made stories for each piece as well as each character. Now, if you wanted to go that route where you were given an English word and you wanted to write the kanji character or the vocabulary word, there is an option to do that with Wani Kani. There's actually a free service online called Kani Wani. Uh, it's deliberately said that way because it's basically the opposite of Wani Kani. Instead of being given a kanji character or a word in Japanese and you having to type out the English meaning, or the pronunciation. You're given an English word or an English concept and you basically have to type out the Japanese. This is a free solution for anyone with a Wani Kani account. So again, this argument that you can't use Wani Kani to practice writing kanji characters from memory has been invalidated. Throughout the video, he also made this claim that you can learn all 2,200 some characters of the Joyo kanji uh, using remembering the kanji method in less than three months. I'm not exactly sure how he's able to do that unless, you know, he's got some amazing uh, memory or whatever. Before I started Wanikani, I actually started on the Heisig method with remembering the kanji. I bought both the first two books. I religiously went through this every day, writing out the characters, memorizing the stories and monomics, stuff like that. I did this for months, over three months. And I only got up to like level 10 before I kind of got really tired of it. Mind you, I was also a college student at the time, so I probably don't have as much time as some people out there, but even then, under three months memorizing all those characters with this method, for me, the stories are fine and it does improve my ability to memorize the characters and recall them, but I still have to write them out if I wanna be able to write them from memory. The second innovation that remembering the kanji made was introducing a powerful system of mnemonics, which works with the optimized order the kanji are presented in to reduce the cognitive load of learning and remembering characters even further. And so does Wani Kani. One of the points he kept bringing up was that having to memorize or remember a list of definitions or terms for a single word or kanji character is infinitely more harder than just memorizing one. And I already talked about this, but I 
think it's worth mentioning again since he kept bringing it up in the video. Yes, I totally agree with that. And anyone who's learned kanji before realizes this. Unless you're like really oblivious or a super beginner in Japanese and you're learning kanji on your own, no one is gonna memorize whole lists of definitions or a few words for this single character or whatever. That's just common sense. He also states that remembering the kanji's goal is to get you to memorize all the characters so that you can get out into the world of kanji, literature, and magazines, websites, reading all these things. Well, that's great, um, but it does take two books to do that. So you literally, you have to pay twice, and it takes a while for a normal person, I think. Eventually in his video, he gets into a direct comparison with Wanikani and RTK. He says one of the negative points about Wanikani is that it provides pre-made monomics and stories. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> what is remembering the kanji? Literally the first 550 characters or so, you're spoon-fed these pre-made like monomics, pre-made stories to go with every single character. To say that that's a negative point and then to praise remembering the kanji is a contradiction. Now I wasn't sure if he was talking about the stories or if he was talking specifically about the pronunciations in book two, here are the pronunciations. And actually there are no monomics or audio tricks to get you to memorize well the um, assigned pronunciations for each character. Now, interestingly, he does group characters by pronunciation in book two, which I find extremely helpful and very useful. Wani Kani does not do that. These books also come with monomics and pre-built stories. The very thing that Matt criticized Wani Kani for, like, I'm wondering if he even opened these books and looked at them. Now, I think what he was trying to get at was that these books eventually try to wean you off of those pre-made stories, and eventually you're just given the key words. And in this way, it encourages you to make your own stories and stuff like that. In his argument, Matt said that Wani Kani doesn't encourage you to make these highly personal and vivid stories. Well, that's just not true. Wani Kani provides for you context notes. You can write in notes and your own stories into each and every term. That's encouragement right there. If you don't like their pre-made stories, if you don't like their pre-made methods for remembering how to pronounce the character or word, you can just write it in your own. You don't have to follow the set system. The set system is there for absolute beginners who really aren't that creative and who don't feel like maybe making their own stories or whatever. In this way, Wani Kani covers every base. With remembering the kanji, you're kind of forced to be weaned off. You're kind of forced to follow that timeline, start spoon fed, and then go off and start making your own. To me, that's more rigid and, well, less useful. So when it comes to remembering the kanji, gotta take a few points off there. Another negative point that he brought up about Wani Kani is that it's a paid service. But wait, so is remembering the kanji. You have to pay for these books. I mean, unless you stole them. I forget how much these books were, but they weren't incredibly a lot. And to get the whole system, the whole Heisig system, you have to buy two. If you just buy the first one, you're literally only getting half the system and it's not that useful for you. I think his main issue with Wani Kani being a paid service is that it's a subscription and at times it can be kind of high. But what did you expect from a fantastic kanji learning resource? They give you the first three lessons for free as a trial. And every year there are year-end sales. I've actually bought the lifetime membership subscription to Wanikani on that New Year's sale. It was a significant discount. And I'm so glad I did because I now have forever this resource, this amazing kanji learning resource that I can use and bring up wherever I am. Uh, with internet access, it's great. But literally all the features that Wani Kani has that remembering the kanji doesn't, these prices only make sense. Not only do you have a method to teach you the components of kanji, the kanji characters itself, the words, you have all these context sentences, and you have native pronunciations. <laughs> of course they're gonna charge money for this, this is amazing. It's a very appropriate price tag, in my opinion. Another negative point he makes is that 
Well, he doesn't really like Wani Kani's space repetition system. But the people at Wani Kani are pretty smart and they know generally how to space out uh, the content, the material, so that it doesn't overwhelm you, so that it doesn't leave your mind. I enjoy their space repetition system. I think it's just my pace. It doesn't overwhelm me. It's not too little and it's not too much, but it does take time and nonetheless, it's perfectly legit. And I've learned so much from this system. Like, I can't tell you how thankful I am to the Wani Kani team for building this system. But by far the biggest issue with Wani Kani is that it has you learn isolated kanji readings, as well as vocab, out of context. This is completely false. As I mentioned several times before in this video, every character you learn is given a vocabulary word, and every vocabulary word is given an example sentence, otherwise known as a context sentence. This is literally the definition of learning things in context. I don't know, maybe this is just an issue with his definition of context or in context? Learning a bunch of similar information at the same time out of context is a recipe for memory interference. And a natural corollary of this inefficiency is that it's going to take you a good long while to actually get all of the material into your memory. And that's just false. Surely it takes a long time to complete Wani Kani, but not really because of memory interference. Memory interference, while it does occur in Wani Kani, does not occur that much. Wani Kani takes a long time to complete 100% because it has so much content. There are thousands of vocabulary terms, literally 2,200 some kanji characters, and a slew of radicals or components that make up each kanji character. I do want to talk a little bit about memory interference when it comes to Wani Kani. I will say, le legit, the only negative thing about Wani Kani is that they do teach some vocabulary words, not kanji characters, not radicals, but vocabulary words. Some of them they do bring in with similar definitions together, and sometimes they do tell you the nuances and the differences between them, but sometimes they don't. Anyways, oftentimes I get these words confused because they're so similar in meaning. When it comes to kanji characters though and their readings, that's not really an issue in Wani Kani. He also made it seem like that once you learn uh, kanji characters in Wani Kani, Wani Kani then gives you a bunch of vocabulary that utilizes these characters, and that's false as well. Once you've gotten a character into the next level, like Guru, then it will bring up some words, not all of them, but some words that utilize this character along with, you know, other kanji characters you've already learned. In this way, memory interference is minimized because you're not confusing a character with its word or whatever or something like that. To me, you know, watching, there's one point in this video where it looks like he's showing us a live a personal experience or a personal use of Wani Kani and clearly he's at level one and he probably signed up for the free trial to get this footage. Now this tells me he didn't really use Wani Kani all too much. He didn't use it deeply or explore all its features or its full potential. This is probably the reason why there are so many falsities about Wani Kani in his video and as a result, ultimately, I can't trust his analysis when it comes to anything about Wani Kani. Now with Wani Kani, when you do learn the readings, you learn multiple at the same time, which is a pretty bad idea. So again, I mentioned this before in the video, <laughs> Wani Kani doesn't expect you to learn multiple readings, only one. It just gives you options. You are not literally expected to memorize all of those, it's just common sense. All in all, these two can't really be compared because, like I said before, their goals and their purposes are really fundamentally different. Remembering the kanji only focuses on the components of the kanji characters and the kanji characters themselves in the first book. And in the second book, it only focuses on single readings of those characters and some vocab words. Whereas Wani Kani takes it to the extreme and gives you not only the components the characters, but it also gives you a slew of words, native pronunciations, and context sentences, which is everything Matt was raving about, and something that Remembering the Kanji doesn't really provide. I'm gonna make a video later about my experience with Remembering the Kanji, and then maybe a comparison a more detailed comparison video of Wani Kani and Remembering the Kanji. For now, this video is getting long enough. I think I should end it right here. I am going to say this one thing. Everyone's preferred learning style is different. Now we all have, I assume we all have, the same human brains, we're all human, and the way that we learn, the most efficient and best way that we can learn and memorize things, there is probably one way, one specific way, or maybe one set of ways that, you know, humans can employ to 
have the most efficient and the best way to memorize things. And certainly I do believe that mapping over existing ideas or, you know, connecting to existing ideas in your brain is part of that. But even so, people have different preferences, people have different likes. In terms of learning and memorizing things, maybe such a method isn't right for everyone. Maybe it's too slow for someone, maybe it's too fast for someone else. For me, learning kanji through remembering the kanji was monotonous and really, really slow. And over time, I found that if I wasn't writing out the characters constantly or using an SRS system like Anki, I was forgetting the characters even though I had learned the stories before. With Wanikani, I'm encouraged to log in every morning and again at night to go over my queue of characters and components and words. But I will say that using Wanikani isn't my only way of studying kanji. I'm gonna go over my full kanji workout in another video in the future. I hope you guys found this useful. Another piece of advice, question everything. You know, not everyone has all the answers. Not everyone has all the information on a piece of software or a program or a book or anything. Be careful what you watch out there, be careful what you hear and believe, and just uh, keep going. Peace guys.